Hey there, this is part three of the Flowweaver walkthrough tutorial. In this video, we're going to be covering the underworld and the puzzles there with all the gears. So we're going to put the cup that the fairies gave us into our planar compass and that will open up the underworld. But first, let's solve the four digit code that we see behind the skeleton that's going to give us a pink crystal. Now, you guys may have done this earlier. That's totally fine. A lot of these puzzles were designed to be done in whatever order you prefer. And as you can see, we just kind of left that there. So now, because we have access to the Fey Lands, we're going to grab that acorn we saw earlier, and we're going to bring it back to the land that's teeming with life, stick it in some dirt, and let it stew there for a bit. Now, let's head to the underworld. Ooh, it's kind of a hellish place. Very industrial with a giant pit of lava beneath us. Lovely. So first things first, why don't we meditate to get a lay of the land, check out our interaction points. You'll notice there are some gears up ahead and um, the little blue pixels will tell you where th things might happen so keep keep those things in mind <laughs> i don't want to spoil it for you just yet uh, right now we are going to take a look at this contraption here so we're going to pause because there, there's a lot of things happening um we are using our shadow hand ability to burn these vines here so this machine has kind of been overtaken by these vines and it's stopping the gears from turning um, and we do need this machine to work. So if you listen to the voice line, it does give you that clue that our shadow hand seems overheated in this place. Um, and we're going to use that heat to our advantage. Oh, there's some old rope twisting and the first gear we're going to grab is this thin one from the top there. And that goes up here in the top left. And there is a gear underneath in that tiny little cave there. So we're going to show you guys how to get that. Um, but for now, let's grab all of the easier gears. So there's clearly some up on the ceiling. Now, we do know exactly where each gear goes. Um, this might take you several tries to figure out. But pretty much once you slot them in, you can kind of mix and match the positions until you see all of them turn. If they're not turning, then it means you haven't placed every single gear yet. There are a total of five gears for this puzzle, and so far we have placed three. All right, if you pull that pulley up there, it brings a mine cart. Now, pulling this to the side changes the track. Uh, and you'll see the light on the eyes of the skulls will indicate which track it's been switched to. So let's uh, summon another mine cart and let it go down that hill. And that is how we will get that tiny gear there uh, right when those doors open up. So grab that real quick. Now, if you do drop any of these gears, it, it happens. Um, they will respawn in their original place. So just look for them there again. So now we have a total of four gears. If we pay attention to these four pipes here, you see that there are gears dropping in them. And if you listen closely, the number of gear drops give you a four digit code. And guess where four digit codes go? That's right, they go in our quantum chest back at the material world. So let's head back there now. And in case you missed it, the code was 1263. That gives us our final gear. Now you might be wondering, 
how am I supposed to know that the gear is in another dimension? Well, if you listen to some of the voice lines said by the demon overseer, which I mentioned earlier, he does mention that a gear has been stolen. So that is kind of your auditory hint to maybe look outside of the underworld. Now that the contraption is moving, the gears are turning, all of our little machines here are working again. So we're going to use our shadow hand to burn that rope up there. And that allows the conveyor belt to drop whatever those little round flasks are down below. Now the femur bone here stops the mine carts from their infinite loop around the track. It adds a little break at the end there. And oops, we've totally forgot to switch the track. So let's switch the track to the left track. Try again. And as you can see, now the cart stops next to us. So we have time to actually grab the things. We're going to take this giant molten rock here, stamp it, and oh, look. It's a rune stone, and we all know what to do with those. So before we forget, let's go back to the material world, drop it in. We're going to get a voice prompt from one of the necromancer's memories. Master wove into the rune stones captured a traveler from another world as he tried to move between the flows. He allowed him to sprawl, to reach into the shadow realm and the fey lands. The beast of the shadow realm killed him before he could get far. Oof, so she's actually describing the demise of the spirit that we met earlier. It's a shame how he ended, huh? Well, hopefully that end doesn't end up happening to us, right? She's watching me, trying to learn from me. But her spell of binding weakens with every runestone I find. So now we can pull out this gate. You may have noticed that before. And that stops the cart from progressing, so there's time for the flask to drop into the cart. And once that gate automatically goes back inside, now we can grab the flask. And that is a flask of oil that oils this lever here. So once we pull the lever, we get a little stone that appears. Look at this fire stone. I wonder what happens if you drop it in here. It looks like there's some energy inside it, but I can't tell. This is actually supposed to be a polishing device. And it polishes a nice shiny stone for us that turns into the Ray of Fire spell. And this is the Underworld spell. So now that we have it equipped, you can kind of play around with it, see what it does. But this spell will be useful in other realms for sure. You could even double wield the fire ray if you want. So have fun with it. 